body found in the bay October 6 is confirmed as Elizabeth Sullivan. The 31 year old was reported missing from her home near Liberty Station back in October of 2014. Homicide detectives are investigating. On this episode of Black Girl Gone, I tell the story of Elizabeth Sullivan, a 31 year old woman who went missing in October 2014. The last time Elizabeth was seen was on October 13th, 2014, at her home in San Diego, California. Two years later, her body was found floating in a river. When Liz first went missing, investigators had a difficult time figuring out exactly what happened to this wife and mother. But after her body was found near her house, investigators had to figure out not only who killed Elizabeth, they also had to find out exactly where she had been for two years. This is Elizabeth's story. When Elizabeth was reported missing, her family and friends had no idea that it would be years before the truth about what really happened to her came to light. Elizabeth was born Elizabeth Ricks in Hampton, Virginia in 1983. Elizabeth, who went by Liz, was described as a very intelligent woman, but she was also an eclectic free spirit who her friends described as a person you could just be yourself around. Liz was by all accounts a happy person, sometimes unpredictable, but always loving, always caring. The kind of friend you could tell your deepest, darkest secrets to and wouldn't judge you. Liz had spent most of her life in Virginia and had graduated high school in 2001. It's not clear what Liz's life was like after high school, but she stayed in Virginia, and eventually, she met Matthew Sullivan. Matt was originally from the Midwest, but was in the Navy and was stationed at the Naval Base in Norfolk, Virginia. I'm not sure when or how Liz met Matt, but once they started dating, it was clear that Liz really liked this guy. Her friend Calandra told Dateline that when they were around each other, you could just see the sparks between them. After they started dating, their relationship moved pretty fast. Calandra said that Liz saw potential in Matt, and she knew that he could offer her some stability. But it wasn't just Liz that was smitten. Matt was, too. Liz was exciting and beautiful, and they were having a good time together. And so when Matt found out that he was being reassigned to San Diego, California, he knew he didn't want his relationship with Liz to end. And so, just a few months after they met, they got married. The news of the marriage in such a short period of time seemed like the couple was moving too fast. But that was kind of on brand for Liz, who her friend said was led by her emotions and was sometimes impulsive. After they got married, Liz and Matt moved to the Point Loma neighborhood of San Diego, where they lived in military housing near the base. It was a big move for Liz, who had lived in Virginia her whole life. She didn't have friends or family in San Diego, and so everything in her life changed in more ways than one. It was an exciting time, and shortly before their move, Liz found out that she was pregnant with the couple's first child. According to her friend, the pregnancy had caught Liz off guard. In the middle of her whirlwind romance and moving across the country, the timing wasn't exactly right, and the thought of being a new mom was overwhelming, as you may imagine. But once Liz came to terms with the reality of her new life, she was looking forward to the birth of her daughter. Now, the life of a military spouse can be a lonely one because the other half can be deployed for an extended period of time. And not long after moving to San Diego, Matt was deployed, and missed most of Liz's pregnancy. He was able to come home after the birth of their first daughter, but was deployed again shortly after. Liz was in many ways living the life of a single mother. While her husband was deployed, she took on the day-to-day -day responsibilities of caring for an infant alone. Matt was gone most of the time, and it took a toll on their young marriage. Eventually, during one of his stays back home, Liz became pregnant with their second daughter. But once again, Matt had to leave Liz by herself with what was soon to be two young children. Now, while he was deployed, 
Liz had adjusted to her life and had established routines for her and the girls. After a few years, she had become accustomed to the long periods of time that her husband was away and had learned to balance her ever-changing responsibilities. But when her husband came back home after his deployment was over, things changed. Having met back home should have been a joyous time for the family, but it wasn't. Liz had gotten used to being on her own with the kids, and having her husband back threw things off for her. She had established these routines that didn't include him, and things were different now that he was back. Liz was a mom now, and her priority was her children. She wasn't the same fun, spontaneous Liz that Matt had married. She had responsibilities, and so instead of Matt returning home, making their relationship stronger, the problems in their marriage begin to deepen. The fact that Liz and Matthew had not known each other very long before getting married and moving across the country meant that they were really still getting to know each other. In the beginning of a relationship, it's easy to get caught up in the romance, the excitement. Sometimes we ignore the things that we shouldn't or are simply blinded by love or, if we're being honest, lust. And so for Liz and Matthew... He had been deployed most of their marriage, and when he came home, it was clear that they were very different. Liz would try to get Matt to do things with her and the girls, but he didn't want to. Calandra said that she would try to motivate him to do different things, and Matt just wasn't interested. He was content with just going to work and coming home, and Liz wanted more. Her friend said that she was frustrated and disappointed in her husband, She was trying to build their life together, but Matt seemed only interested in what he had going on. As things in the relationship continued to deteriorate, the couple had begun sleeping in separate rooms, on separate floors. Liz would often confide in her friends about the issues in her and Matt's marriage. But just when she didn't think things could get worse between them, Matt told Liz that his mom's sister and his mom's partner were going to be moving into their house, and he wasn't asking. He had already made the arrangements. His family was moving in. Liz's friends said that she was livid. Not only had he not consulted her about three people moving into their home, apparently Liz did not get along with Matt's family and had apprehensions about them being around their daughters. Liz's friend Nathan, in his interview with Dateline, recalled Liz calling him after finding out about her in-laws moving in. He said that she came over to his house so she could vent about what was happening in her life, and she needed a moment to clear her head, and so she ended up spending the night at his house. Nathan said that the next day, when he spoke to Liz, she was really short on the phone, which was unlike her. He said that she told him that she had to go and hung up really quickly. But before she did, she told him that she would call him the next day. But when the next day came and went, and Nathan had not heard from Liz, he started to get worried. He tried to call her, but she wasn't answering the phone. By that Tuesday, October 14th, Nathan said that he had a gut feeling that something was wrong because Liz's in-laws were supposed to fly in that day, and he knew that this was a big deal for her. He fully expected her to call him and fill him in on what was going on, but she didn't. And so Nathan said that he called Matt and asked him if Liz was okay. He said that Matt told him that he hadn't heard from his wife since the day before. He said that he knew that she was upset about his family moving in, and so he figured that she was just off somewhere blowing off steam. He didn't seem concerned because, according to him, This wasn't the first time that Liz had gone off by herself. But Nathan wasn't buying it. He felt like something was really wrong, and so he decided to contact the San Diego Police Department to report Liz missing. At first, police were dismissive, but when one day turned to two, and then three, Liz was officially declared a missing person. After Liz officially became a missing person, police went to the home that she shared with Matt to speak to him and do an initial search of the home. 
Matt told police that he and Liz were having marital problems, but he said that it wasn't unusual for her to leave. He said he didn't report her missing because he thought that she had left him. Now, police did search the home, but did not find anything that was suspicious. However, Liz's car was in the garage, which raised questions about where she could be and how far she could have gone. Police turned to the media for help locating Liz, and as the days went by, Matt began to admit to police and the media that this behavior wasn't like Liz. Her phone was off, and it had been days since anyone had seen her or spoken to her. Investigators had learned that the last contact from Liz was a text to a friend on October the 13th. But since then, her phone had been dead. Liz's daughters were four and two by then, and so for her just to leave them for this extended period of time with no explanation was concerning for the people who knew her and loved her. Now, Liz had officially been reporting missing on October 14th, 2014, and in the hours after the report was received, police had not gotten any leads. But six days after Liz was last seen at her home, police received a report from a couple who said they saw Liz near a soccer field not far from her home. The couple, one of whom was an off-duty sheriff, said that he and his wife spoke to Liz, that she was disoriented and looking for her phone, and she told them that she had slept in the park the night before. The couple said that she was wearing black yoga pants and a gray sweatshirt. Now, ten days after that, there was another sighting of Liz near the airport. But there's no way to know for sure if either of these sightings were actually Liz. But as the weeks went by, it was becoming more and more obvious to investigators and Liz's loved ones that something had happened to Liz. The questions at that point were never ending. How could Liz have just vanished without a trace? Where had she gone and how did she get there? Investigators working on this case were trying to find her and those answers. But Little did they know, this was only just the beginning. On October 14th, 2014, Liz Sullivan was reported missing from her home in San Diego, California. Liz was last seen on October the 13th, and in the days and weeks following her disappearance, investigators had hit a dead end. In November 2014, almost a month after Liz was last seen, her husband Matt was interviewed by People Magazine. It was his first interview with the media since Liz's disappearance, and in his interview, Matt appeared to be a devastated husband. Quote, I'm at the end of my rope. I'm running on fumes right now. I don't know where to look. I'm always around the neighborhood trying to catch a glimpse of her. Even if I got a phone call saying she's okay, it would put my mind at rest. But nothing at this point, Matthew told people. He spoke about the issues in their marriage, but conceded that Liz had never been gone for more than a day. Quote, the girls need their mom. She's never been gone this long, nowhere near this long. She's been with them their whole lives. While I was at work or on deployment, she was always there. They're definitely not used to her being gone, he continued. Matthew came off as emotional during the interview and spoke about the toll Liz's disappearance took on him. Quote, it's killing me. I've lost 25 pounds. It's taking a toll physically and mentally. I think about her constantly. I can't stop. The girls are my biggest concern right now. I have to keep going, try to do what I have to do for them and keep praying, he said. In the weeks since Liz vanished, the community had rallied around Matt and the couple's young daughters. There were flyers all over the city, and searches were being conducted by local law enforcement and volunteers. Liz's dad had come from Virginia to help with the girls and join the searches for his daughter. 
During his stay in San Diego, he sat down with the local news station to ask the public for help in finding his daughter. Quote, it can happen to you. When it does, it gets very personal, and it takes on a whole new light when it happens to you. You get a strength like you never had before, because that's my daughter, and I'm bringing her home, her father told NBC7. Weeks turned to months, and there was still no sign of Liz. After the initial two sightings, shortly after her disappearance, there had been very little information about Liz's case. Investigators had uncovered some things about Liz during their investigation that made them question whether or not she had just left on her own. Journals revealed that she was battling depression and had been under the care of a psychiatrist for years. They also found a story that she had written about a woman who went missing, and the details of the fictional story were eerily similar to the circumstances of her own disappearance. The issues in her marriage to Matt were no secret, but investigators found out that a few months before she disappeared, Liz had joined the dating app Tinder. Her friend Calandra told Dateline that Liz had joined the app as a way to sort of pass time, you know, fantasy, and to boost her self-esteem, but it wasn't something that she took seriously. But finding her Tinder account added another layer to this investigation. Detectives wondered if Liz had met someone on the app and left with them. Now, investigators did discover that Liz had met some of the men she connected with on Tinder in person and discovered that she had developed a relationship with a man named Stephen. They had dated secretly for a while. Liz would spend time at Stephen's house where he lived with a roommate. It's not clear how long they saw each other, but their relationship ended when Stephen's roommate's girlfriend saw Liz's car in the driveway and noticed that she had car seats. Now, for whatever reason, she decided that Liz must have left her children at home alone, and so she called Child Protective Services to file a report against Liz. When Child Protective Services received the report, they went over to Liz's home to do a welfare check on her girls. They found nothing in the home, but they told Liz that they would have to make contact with the children's other parent. And Nathan told Dateline that Liz was terrified that Matt was going to find out about her affair. And so Liz decided that the best course of action was just to come clean. When detectives said that they asked Matt about his reaction to the affair, he seemed unfazed. He said that he and Liz were living separate lives, and so he didn't really care about her seeing other men. But after learning about Stephen, Investigators had tried to talk to him, but he refused to speak to them and lawyered up. However, after Liz's dad begged him to give investigators any information he had about Liz, Stephen, through his lawyer, released a statement, and he said that a month after Liz was reported missing, he received an email from an account he didn't recognize, but the sender said that they were Liz. Stephen said that he didn't think it was her, and so he asked her a question only she would know. What did she give him for his birthday? And the sender replied with the correct answer, a Gumby keychain. But when investigators asked for the email, Stephen said that he had deleted it. And detectives working on the case had no idea if the email really came from Liz, but if it had... That meant that she was alive a month after she disappeared. Eventually, investigators were able to obtain a search warrant for Stephen's home, and when they executed the warrant, they found nothing in his house that would connect him to Liz's disappearance. But they did find something else. They had been able to search through Stephen's phone, and in it, they found several text messages from Matt. Now, it was clear from those texts that Matt had not been honest with them about his real feelings regarding Liz's affair. He said that he didn't care, but the messages said otherwise. 
The text went back to September 2014, and Matt was clearly angry that his wife had been seeing Stephen. The messages were not threatening, but they were passive-aggressive, and Matt had somehow known each time Liz and Stephen had spoken on the phone. A week before she disappeared, Matt sent a text to Stephen that read, quote, Sorry to trouble you yet again, but I'm going to cut her off financially soon. If you do care, then please take action and support her. Finding the messages made investigators turn their attention back on Matt. After speaking to Nathan, again, investigators learned that the problems in Liz's marriage were more than just a couple who had drifted apart. Liz said Matt had been abusive, and the last time Nathan saw her, she told him that she wanted to divorce Matt. In fact, she had already contacted a divorce attorney, and the day before she disappeared, Liz had paid the retainer for the attorney using Matt's credit card. That same day, October 13th, 2014, detectives also discovered that Matt had made a very strange phone call to 911. In the call, Matt said that he was afraid that his wife Liz was trying to get him evicted or arrested. He said that she took his credit card to hire a lawyer against him. And he said that he was afraid that she was reporting him for going through her emails and journals. An hour and a half later, he called back to report that all the money in he and Liz's joint account had been moved. The next day, Liz was reported missing. Detectives were becoming more and more suspicious of Matt, but Liz's friend Calandra told Dateline that from the beginning, she had found his behavior strange. She said that while in his interview with People, Matt had come across as this heartbroken husband who was grateful for all the help he was receiving from Liz's family and friends, Calandra said that the morning the article came out in People, Matt had deleted all his posts about Liz from his social media and had unfriended her and several other people connected to his missing wife. He also shut her phone off, which meant that if she had been alive, her only mode of communication had been cut off. And then three months after Liz disappeared, another woman began staying at Matt's house. He claimed that she was just a friend that had come to help with the kids, but this was someone that he was dating. And after she started staying with him, Matt changed his name on Facebook and changed his status to in a relationship. Investigators who had initially not believed that Matt was involved in Liz's disappearance slowly began to change their mind as they took a closer look at Matt. Detectives said that. He had answers for everything and, at times, was a very difficult person to interview. But during the course of their investigation, detectives found two credit card charges that they thought were suspicious, and so they called Matt in so that they could speak to him again. Now, one of the charges was for a carpet cleaner that he had purchased the day his wife was reported missing. Now, Matt said that his family was coming into town, and so... He was just getting the house ready for them. Detectives thought it was suspicious, but was also a reasonable explanation. But a month later, he again bought a carpet cleaner and a giant roll of industrial-sized plastic wrap. Matt said that he had purchased the plastic wrap so that he could wrap up some of his mother's things to put in storage after she had moved in. Detectives said that he had an explanation for everything, and he did. And police had no evidence to negate what he had told them. They were suspicious, but they had no proof that Matt was involved in his wife's disappearance. Ten months after she disappeared, police declared Liz's case cold. They had no solid information about her whereabouts. Eventually. Matt's new girlfriend officially moved in. His family moved out, and about a year after Liz vanished, Matt and his girlfriend had a child together. 
He was no longer the devastated husband searching for his wife. Matt had completely moved on and started a new life with his new girlfriend. It was starting to feel like Liz would just be another missing Black woman who would never be found and whose family would never get justice. But nearly two years to the day that Liz went missing, everything changed. In October 2016, a man walking along the water near FTC Park in San Diego saw a body floating in the river. At first, he didn't know what he was seeing, but as he got closer, he realized it was, in fact, a body. The person was wearing blue jeans, a sweater, and one brown boot. The body was badly decomposed, and it was going to take dental records to identify who this person was, but the body was found less than half a mile from where Liz lived. It took two months, but in December 2016, when the results from the dental records were received, it confirmed that it was Elizabeth Sullivan. Nearly two years after she was last seen, Liz had finally been found. But it wasn't the ending that her family and friends wanted. After an autopsy was performed, it was determined that Liz had been murdered, stabbed to death. She had been stabbed repeatedly, and she also had a fractured jaw. After nearly two years of searching, for Liz's body to turn up in the water, less than a mile from where she lived, was suspicious. Her body was badly decomposed, but it could not have been in the water for two years and be in the condition that it was. But during the autopsy, the medical examiner said that based on their findings, Liz had died a month or two before she had been placed in the water. But how was that possible? Because Liz had been missing for two years. After Liz's body was found, it reignited this case that had been cold. The first person that police wanted to speak to was Matt. But when they went to his house, they discovered that on the day that Liz's body was found, Matt had moved across the country to Maryland to be with his girlfriend. The move and timing raised even more suspicions, but it also presented investigators with an opportunity. Now that Matt had moved out, they could do a full forensic search of the home before another tenant moved in. The detective told Dateline that because Matt had allowed them to search the home several times without yielding any results, getting a full forensic search while he was still living there would have been difficult. But now that he was gone, they could search the home more thoroughly than they could before. Detectives obtained a search warrant for the house, and when they did, they found a treasure trove of evidence. Police had discovered early on in the investigation that Calandra had spoken to Liz on the 13th, the day before she was reported missing, and she told police that Liz called her after she and Matt were fighting and that she was afraid and had locked herself in her room and told Calandra that Matt was threatening to kill her. But when police searched Liz's phone, there was no record of the call taking place. However, after Liz's body was found, investigators decided to look at Calandra's phone, and they found the call that had taken place on the 13th. After they confirmed that call, and once in the house, investigators first focused on Liz's bedroom. They swapped her bathroom with luminol, and it lit up. They also tested a section of carpet outside her door, and it also lit up. Someone clearly tried to clean up the blood, but it had only cleaned the surface. Underneath the carpet, the blood had soaked into the padding and flooring below. When the blood was tested, it was a positive match for Liz. But the evidence wasn't enough. 
Detectives had gone to the DA for an arrest warrant, but they were told they needed more. Another year went by, and in October 2017, detectives decided to go back to the home where Liz and Matt lived. And this time, they searched the attic. And when they did, tucked underneath some installation, they found a military-style folded knife. They collected it for evidence, and when it was tested, it had DNA from both Liz and Matt, and detectives were convinced that they had found their murder weapon. Once the DNA came back, investigators were able to secure an arrest warrant, and Matthew Sullivan was arrested at his home in Delaware and extradited back to San Diego to face charges. In January 2018, Three years after Liz disappeared and over a year after her body was found, Matt was charged with his wife's murder. After another two years of back-and-forth legal proceedings, Matthew's trial began on February 21st, 2020. The prosecution had determined that the motive for Liz's murder was Matt's anger over her affair and her threats of divorce. The defense, on the other hand, tried to create reasonable doubt by arguing that Liz had left Matt. They blamed her mental state and affair as evidence, and they said that the email that had been sent to Stephen was proof that she was alive after she had been reported missing. And they also said that based on the autopsy evidence, Liz had died in 2016, And so the timeline and theory being presented by prosecutors was false. And that was a compelling argument. Based on the Emmy's initial findings, Liz had only been dead a month, two at the max, before her body was found, which presented a problem for the prosecutors, or so the defense thought. But the prosecutors had an explanation. The theory they presented was that the reason Liz's body was in the condition it was two years after she was murdered was because her body had been frozen, slowing down the decomposition. The prosecution said that they believed Matt had murdered Liz and then hid her body when police searched the home. They believed after he killed her, he then wrapped her body in the plastic wrap he bought, and then a few days later, after the home had been searched, he placed her body in the deep freezer that they kept in the garage. And that's where she stayed for two years until Matt decided to move. And so he took Liz and threw her body in the water near their home. The defense worked hard to create that reasonable doubt, but in the end, the jury did not believe them. And in March 2020, Matthew Sullivan was found guilty of second-degree murder and was sentenced to 16 years to life in prison. In the Dateline episode about Liz's murder, Matt is interviewed from jail and he continues to maintain his innocence. He said he passed a lie detector test and the prosecution's theory about him storing Liz's body in the deep freezer was ridiculous. He said that there was no way that he could have hidden a body in a freezer with that many people living in his home. He also said that he never hit Liz and that he had nothing to do with her murder at all. He said that it was all crazy. But as of today, Matthew Sullivan is behind bars, serving out his sentence for the murder of his wife. After being missing for two years, Liz's story came to a devastating conclusion and It took another four years for justice to be served. When Liz left Virginia to start her new life with her new husband, she had no way to know that less than five years later, it would all end so brutally. Marriage is hard, and the end of a marriage can bring out the worst in people, but no one deserves to be murdered when it's over. Liz was trying to end her marriage, She knew it wasn't working, but in the end, she could not get away. She was a mom, and her children were so young when she was taken from them that they never got the chance to grow up with her and 
know their mom, which is one of the saddest parts of this story. Liz was loved by the people in her life. She was a light in a dark world, even when she was struggling with life herself. And she is deeply missed by them. May Elizabeth Ricks Sullivan rest in peace. Thank you for listening to this week's episode. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, and Threads.